As a general recommendation, individuals with a spinal cord injury or impairment should have regular assessments by their family physician, and if their spasticity changes within a short period of time, they should seek medical care as soon as possible to investigate a potential cause of the change in the spasticity. Spasticity is reactive to what's going on with your general health, there's no doubt about it, and in fact, in some respects, it's a good bellwether for how you're doing right. from a health perspective. Right, so you mean it can be a red flag yeah, absolutely. for something like a urine infection yes. uh, or an infection you, simple of the... As a cold, Cold. You can, you can uh, judge it by the level of spasticity. Benign triggers of spasticity can include changes in posture or position, temperature extremes, changes in the individual's circadian rhythm, menstruation, muscle fatigue, emotional stress, minor common illnesses such as cold or flu, tight shoes, and tight clothing. Increases in spasticity may also occur either during pregnancy or after delivery. A detailed history regarding the onset, pattern, and severity of spasticity can often identify these potential causes. However, an increase or change in spasticity may also be a red flag for a more serious issue. It could be an indicator of urinary tract infections, kidney stones, inflammation, or cancer in the bladder, particularly with indwelling Coley catheters as compared to intermittent catheterization, constipation, hemorrhoids, or fecal impaction of the bowel, pressure ulcers in the skin, cysts or syrinx, or changes in motor or sensory function in the spinal cord. There are a couple of conditions that can trigger spasticity that you really don't want to miss. One of them is a syrinx, so the way to determine that is to ensure that when you first meet the individual with spinal cord injury that you're really familiar with their neurological examination. You can use the Asia Impairment Scale in order to do so and that's available online. If you find that something's changed in terms of a loss of sensory or motor function, that's something that needs to be acted on immediately. That needs to be imaged with an MRI uh, if the individual has a contour indication to an MRI, then an option is a CT myelogram. You may also want to look at the bigger picture and see is there a problem um, with the preventative screening that you've done up until now. So for example, uh, depending on the age of the individual, have they had a mammogram? Have they had a colonoscopy? Have they had a pap smear? Those are things that are really important because individuals with spinal cord injury still uh, develop the typical complications that other individuals without spinal cord injury do. Uh, and if anything, they tend to have those problems detected later. Because of the neurological impairments and the motor and sensory deficits, uh, you don't tend to have the same signs and symptoms that other individuals would have. Many healthcare providers play a role in the management of spasticity after spinal cord injury. Observations and appropriate referrals are as important as ongoing treatment by the team. The path that a clinician chooses to take really depends on their comfort level with an individual with spinal cord injury. The reality is that it's, it's not a condition that people receive a lot of training on as general medical practice. So it's really about finding out who in your community would be able to help you uh, with the management of these situations.